today's topic for discussion is finding out the critical speed and uh, there are three types of uh, rotor one is called simply supported rotor another is a simply supported rotor with one side overhung and third type is simply supported rotor with both side overhung so today's uh, discussion is for critical speed of simply supported rotor uh, the point is that using this methods that is called general methods of calculating the critical speed we can find out the multiple critical speeds in the previous uh, video we have seen that using the dunkerley methods or relays methods we could uh, calculate the critical speed only for first that is first critical speed but uh, if the you know use this method that is general methods uh, first second and third or more critical speeds are calculated with uh, more accuracy so that is why it is very important to understand this so in this video we have to see the only first section in subsequent video we'll see another two type of rotor and how the critical speeds are calculated if rotor arrangement has changed so as i said uh, rotor has three types this is simply supported rotor where at the both in bearings are attached and one more important information is that the most uh, point is that the bearing is considered rigid that means rotor is flexible so this is simply supported rotor where at both ends bearings are there and in between loads are there this is simply supported and the second type of rotor arrangement is one end is bearing another in between there is another bearing and uh, let's say in this case it is on as a left hand side it is overhung it can be on right uh, sorry it can right hand side it is shown here but it might be possible that it can be on other side also but in that case there there should not be any overhang on this side this is second type where type of rotor that is called simply supported rotor with one side overhang now the third type is when bearings are located in between and overhung on left hand side also and right hand side also so we'll focus the of the first type of rotor for finding the critical speed the whole you know discussion has been divided into three main broad section the first is a theory part where we have to understand you know shear force bending moment slope and deflection because these terminologies are very important to, for you know calculation of critical speed the second part is procedure or steps what are the procedure we need to follow to find the critical speed and the last is the calculation part where we'll see using with an example how the critical speed is calculated now the theory part as i say as said earlier this is a simply supported rotor so at bearings are at both ends and shaft is supported in between a uh, bearing is rigid and so rotor is considered flexible there is no displacement of shaft at these two bearings however there will be there will be displacement in between the bearing or other location of the shaft uh, this will give the you know as i said the multiple critical speeds with more accuracy and another assumption is that the disk mass 
is considered as a point mass. That means moment of inertia of disk is not considered. We'll see in the coming videos that we can also calculate the critical speed if you consider the moment of inertia of disk. However, we have limited this in this video that we have to consider mass of disk as a point mass. That means moment of inertia disk is not considered. Now, these, as I said, it is a general methods for simply supported rotor. So let us understand some terminology like a span. A span means how many spans are possible in particular type of rotor. In simply supported uh, rotor, bearings one and bearing two are there. So there will be only one span. In case of you know overhang type, it can be two, and in both side overhang it can be three. But in this particular case. That is simply supported rotor with without any overhang it has only one span that is between the bearings that is a span one so number of span will be one and this span will be between the bearings soft so shaft span has to be between the bearings and number of span is one now let us understand shear force and bending moment you can refer the pictures on right side. Shear force, bending moment. This is shear force. This is bending moment. This is a shaft arrangement. Uh, multiple, you know, masses can be considered. However, for understanding purpose, it is it has considered a limited number of masses here. So, what are the assumption here? The mass of shaft is neglected. That means whatever mass of shaft, it has to be distributed at stations. We'll see how it has been done. Mass of shaft is divided in respective station. Mass of disc is considered as a point mass because this is a special case for finding the critical speed. So in particular case, we have to consider as a point mass. We need to define number of stations. The station can be 0, 1, 2, 3, up to n, and respective masses will be m0, 10, m2, m3, and so on, mn. V0 denotes the shear force at station 0, m0 bending moment at station 0, theta 0 slope of sharp deflection curve at station 0 y0 deflection of shaft at station 0 omega frequency of vibration or speed of rotation in radian per second e is a young modulus of modulus of elasticity of shaft in pascal i is a area moment of inertia of shaft in m to the power 4 unit L1, L2 are length of shaft between the station 0 and 1 and a station between 1 and 2 respectively. And let's say X length of shaft from station 0. This is X, this section. Then shear force at point X from station 0 will be this is V0, you can see here V0 plus M0 omega square Y0. So this is the shear force until, until this point, until station number two. So, sorry, until station number one. So this is station number zero, this is station number one. So we can write shear force at station number one, V1 is equal to V0 plus M0 omega square Y0. Bending moment at this is station one. How we can write? This is m zero. This is a shear force that is v one into length l one. So we can write m one is equal to m zero plus v one into l one. So in general, 
shear force at station n can be written as v n is equal to v n minus one plus m n minus one into omega square into y n minus one. Similarly, for bending moment at station n, m n is equal to m n minus one plus v n into l n. So these are the general expression of shear force and bending moment. Now the slope theta of the shaft. Bending moment at particular point x can be written like this. How? This is m0. This section is m1 minus m0 because only this portion total is m1. So this is m0. So we minus it becomes m1 minus m0. Now we have to calculate slope. Sorry. We have to find the moment bending moment at x so we have to calculate this section we can calculate easily this upon this is equal to x upon total length with similar uh, with a similar uh, triangle so mx will be m0 plus m minus n that is m1 minus m0 this is this one into x divided by l1 so this is the expression of bending moment at point x from station 0 shear sorry slope at point x from station 0 can be written as theta x is equal to 1 upon ei integration of mx into dx plus c1 c1 is a constant so on integration, uh, integration we can find theta x is equal to 1 upon ei into you can write clearly here 1 upon ei is equal to m0x plus m1 by 2 minus m0 by 2 into x, x, x square by l1 plus c1. This is equation 1. When x is 0, theta x will be theta 0. And so C1 will be theta 0. So theta x is equal to theta 0 plus i 1 upon ei into m0x plus m1 by 2 minus m0 by 2 bracket close x square by l1. This is general equation for x uh, slope at x. From, the, uh, from station 0. This is equation number 2. When x is equal to L1, then slope at station 1 will also uh, will can be seen as for equation number 2. Theta 1 is equal to theta 0 plus L1. This uh, x square can be put L. So this comes here. L1 by EI into M0 by 2 plus m1 by 2 but l1 by ei is called shaft section flexibility flexibility constant that is beta normally it is expressed in beta so we can write theta 1 is equal to theta 0 plus beta into m0 by 2 plus m1 by 2 so in general expression theta n is equal to theta n minus 1 plus beta n into m n minus 1 by 2 plus m n by 2. So this is a general expression for slope. Now we have to see for deflection. Deflection at point x from station 0 is written as y x is equal to integration of theta x into dx plus c2 this is c2 is another constant so using equation number two have a and replacing theta x we can write y x is equal to inter integration of theta 0 plus e by 1 by ei into m0 x plus m1 by 2 minus m0 by 2 bracket close into x square by l1 bracket close into dx plus c2. 
so general expression is y0 is equal to theta 0 x plus i1 by ei into m0 into x square by 2 plus m1 by 6 minus m0 by 6 sorry m1 by 6 by minus m0 by 6 bracket close into x cube by l1 plus c2 so when x is 0 then y x is y0 and so c2 is equal to y0 so you can write y x is equal to y0 plus theta 0 x plus 1 by ei into m0 x square by 2 plus bracket sign m1 by 6 minus m0 by 6 bracket close into x cube by l1 bracket close this is equation number 4 so when x is equal to l1 and y, y x equal to y1 and so the equation from equation number 4 we can write y1 is equal to y0 plus theta 0 into l1 plus 1 by ei into m0 into l1 square by 2 plus m1 by 6 minus m0 by 6 by close into l1 cube by l1 so on arranging we can write y1 is equal to y0 plus theta 0 into l1 plus beta into m0 by 3 plus m1 by 6 right close into l1 so in general expression we can write yn is equal to yn minus 1 plus theta n minus 1 into ln plus beta n into m n minus 1 by 3 plus m n by 6 break close into ln so this is the general expression of deflection now the boundary condition at a starting station this is the these are the stations 0 1 2 3 up to 10 this is just selected so this is starting station means station number 0 so what are the boundary condition for station number 0 that is where bearing is there k into y0 is equal to minus v0 this is equation number 5 and theta c into theta 0 is equal to m0 this is equation number 6 where k and c are a stiffness constant which is specify elastic resistance on the shaft by the supporting bearings so for simply supported case bearing is infinitely stiff against displacement of the shaft but no resistance to tilting of the shaft so k is infinite but c is zero so from equation number five and six y zero is zero and m zero is zero so these these are the boundary condition for station number zero so we'll see we have to do the calculation in two parts that is part one and part two so initial condition for part one is at station zero shear force v0 is 1 newton bending moment m0 is 0 slope at station 0 theta 0 is 0 and deflection at station 0 y0 is 0 this is the first part 1 injunction then second part that is part 2 the starting station then shear force now we have to put 0 that is v0 is 0 m0 is 0 and uh, theta 0 is 1 and deflection at station 0 is 0 so these are the initial condition with that initial condition we have to calculate the shear force bending moment slope and deflection at other stations now the mode shape and bending moment at last station shear force bending moment slope and deflection at any point in the span is a linear function of four assumed quantity on left hand of the span that is station zero that means so deflection of a station n in a span the any span y n is equal to an into v0 plus bn into m0 
plus cn into theta 0 plus dn into y0 where a n b n c n and d n are numerical constants so that means if you select the deflection of shaft y n equal to y1 part 1 into v0 plus y n part 2 theta 0 this is equation number 7 when n is a last station that means y n is 0 because it is a bearing no deflection and y n part 1 will be y 10 that is last station y 10 part 1 and y n part 2 will be y 10 part 2 so v0 can be using this equation v0 is equal to minus y10 part 2 into theta 0 upon y10 part 1 so replacing v0 in equation number 7 general equation of sharp deflection is written as yn is equal to yn part 2 minus yn part 1 into y10 part 2 upon y10 part 1 bracket close into theta 0 assume theta 0 is 1 then mode shape is written as or sharp deflection yn is equal to yn part 2 minus yn part 1 into y10 part 2 upon y10 part 1 bracket closed so this is the mode shape equation number 8 now similarly we can calculate bending moment mn is equal to mn part 1 into v0 plus mn part 2 into theta 0 equation number 9 replacing v0 in the equation number 9 general expression is written as mn is equal to mn part 2 minus mn part 1 into y10 part 2 upon y10 part 1 very close theta 0 but assume theta 0 is 1 so general expression is written as mn is equal to mn part 2 minus mn part 1 into y10 part 2 upon y10 part 1 so bending moment at the last station that is station number 10 can be written as m10 is equal to m10 part 2 minus m10 part 1 into y10 part 2 upon y10 part 1 this is equation number 10 so this is the bending moment equation at last station that is station number 10 where bearing is there so assume the frequency or speed of station rotation and if bending moment at the last station m10 m10 is 0 then assumed a speed of rotation is the critical speed so we have to vary and find the suitable value where bending moment at the last station m10 is 0 that assumed frequency is called the critical speed frequency now these are the procedure now let us understand the procedure how we can follow for finding the critical speed that simply supported rotor so simply supported rotor has bearing at each in number of span is one between the bearings mass is located at different station is denoted as m0 m1 m2 to 10 length of shaft section denoted is l1 l2 up to 10 l10 diameter of shaft is stone is denoted as d1 d2 d3 up to 10 you can see here it is shown not 10 but in some segment m0 m m2 d1 d2 d3 l1 l2 l3 so these are the shaft distribution at 10 station m0 m1 until m10 so v0 v1 v3 m0 m1 theta 0 theta 1 y0 y1 until last station now procedure steps to be you know followed for finding the critical speed number of stations are chosen as per the convenience and the more the number of stations the more the accuracy of critical speed typically stations from 0 to 10 are chosen as a reasonable accuracy note that zero, station number 0 and 10 are location or bearings mass of segment or shaft and disc are considered a point mask at each station mass of shaft segment is equal to density of shaft into cross section area into length 
shaft length between two station mass is allocated to each station such that total mass of shaft segment is equally distributed on each side of station if additional mass is allocated for particular station then mass is added in that station let's say mass at a station denote are denoted m0 m1 m2 and m10 calculate the area moment of inertia of each shaft segment that is i is equal to pi by 64 d to the power d4 unit will be m4 m2 n to the power 4 where d is the diameter of shaft in meter calculate the flexibility constant of each shaft segment that is beta is equal to l upon ei unit is 1 upon n newton meter where l is the length of shaft segment in meter y is a young modulus of elasticity in pascal now calculation part that is a part one of rotor station number zero to ten these are the part uh, span one so we need to calculate it in two parts part one and part two so this is part one and we need to assume or select the suitable value of angular speed omega in radian per second so part one calculation assumed initial condition station at a station zero that is where bearing is there shear force v0 is 1 bending moment m0 is 0 newton meters slope theta 0 is 0 constant deflection y0 is 0 meter at a station 1 shear force will be v1 is equal to v0 plus m0 into omega square y0 because v0 is known m0 omega is already selected y0 so we can calculate v0 sorry we can calculate v1 similarly bending moment m1 is equal to m0 plus l1 into v1 v1 is known l1 is known m0 is known so we can calculate m1 where l1 is the length of the shaft segment between the station 0 and 1 in meter now slope theta1 is equal to theta0 plus beta1 into m0 upon m0 upon 2 plus m1 upon 2 now everything is known so we can calculate slope theta 1 beta 1 is equal to l1 upon e l1 unit is 1 upon newton meter now deflection y1 is equal to y0 plus beta 1 into m0 by 3 plus m1 by 6 into l1 plus theta 0 into l1 so we can calculate even slope also so in this way keep on calculating shear force bending moment slope and deflection until station 10 so we keep on calculating these these four quantity that is shear force bending moment slope and deflection until station number 10 that is last station now part two this this should be part two not part one part two of rotary station number zero to ten the part two assume the initial condition now at station 0 shear force now we have to assume 0 bending moment m0 is 0 slope will be 1 theta 0 is 1 constant deflection y0 is 0 in meter at station 1 we can calculate shear force v1 is equal to v0 plus m0 into omega square into y0 bending moment m1 is equal to m0 plus v1 l1 we know similarly theta 0 theta 1 is equal to theta 0 plus beta 1 into m0 by 2 plus m1 by 2 so we can include slope also finally deflection y1 is equal to y0 plus beta 1 into m0 by 3 plus m1 by 6 that close into l1 plus theta 0 into l1 so in same way we need to calculate shear force bending moment slope and deflection until station last station that is 10 station number 10 now bending critical speed what how we'll know the critical speed bending moment at last station 10 of span is written as bending moment at last station that is m10 is equal to m10 part 2 minus m10 part 1 into y10 part 2 upon y10 part 1 so we know because we have already calculated part 1 and part 2 for shear force bending moment slope and deflection so we can easily calculate m10 using this equation to find the critical speed 
find the suitable value of angular velocity that is omega such that bending moment at the last station that is m10 to become zero and corresponding value of angular speed velocity is called the critical speed in radian per second to convert critical speed in rpm multiply with 60 and divide with 2 pi select the next higher value of omega such that bending moment at the last station to become zero and corresponding value of angular velocity is called the critical speed in radian per second for higher mode so in this way more number of critical speeds are calculated now the mode shape of critical speed that is a reflection of shaft the equation for sharp general expression for sharp equation reflection is yn is equal to yn part yn part 2 minus yn part 1 into yn part 2 upon yn part 1 so we need to calculate y0 y1 y2 until part number y10 and all are known so we can calculate deflection of sharp at all station so n denotes the station number that is for n is equal to 0, it denotes the station 0. For n is 1, it denotes the station number 1 and so on. So, mode shape of shaft is drawn on shaft length on x-axis and shaft deflection on y-axis for particular critical speed. This will provide mode shape of that critical speed. Please note that deflection is not the actual deflection of shaft or rotor, but it is a mode shape of rotor for particular critical speed. That means this is not actual deflection, but it is a shape for particular critical speed. Now let us understand the calculation part with an example. Rotor is simply supported at both end bearings. There is a load at a midpoint of 500 kg. Density and elasticity of shaft is 7.85 to the power. 5 kg per meter cube and uh, 2.1 into 10 to 11 pascal. Shaft diameter is 0 0.165 meter and total length of shaft is 1.8 meter. Calculate for first, second, third critical speed. So, already we need to distribute the masses at 10 stations as for convenience. So, Actual rotor needs to be transferred into idealized equivalent system consisting series of discs connected with elastic but massless shaft. So, because mass of rotor is trans transferred into stations, as we have, as per convenient, I have con considered 10 stations. So, mass of shaft is considered negligible or neglected. Mass of disc is chosen as a approximate mass of actual rotor moment of inertia of disk is treated as a negligible so disk mass is treated as a point mass now see the calculation part for the first critical speed uh, you see these are the value number of stations bearing is 0 1 is station number 1 then 1 2 3 until 10 which is station number 10 for another bearing. Similarly for, uh, you see the at uh, station number five, the disc mass is added. That is why the, at station number five, station mass is more than other stations. Similarly, you know, sharp diameter, length, arch, already there so flexibility constant is calculated in you know, area moment of inertia of shaft is calculated and then part one and part two is considered with initial assumption that is shear force v01 remaining that is m0 theta 0 y0 is 0 similarly in the second part theta 0 is considered 1 and others like v0 m0 and y0 is considered 0 with that injunction keep on calculating the other station until station number 10 and then with that uh, 
particular value selected value of omega you can see the bending moment at station number 10 becomes zero so that is considered critical speed if you see in rpm it critical speed in rpm is 2977 you see the now mode shape of critical speed that means length of sharp in x axis and deflection y axis but the different stations diff, uh, sorry it different stations uh, deflections are calculated and it plotted on y axis this will give the first critical speed mode shape now second critical speeds is 24822 same way only by changing the angular speed and you will see the final bending moment at station number 10 that is the last station should be zero so this is another or second critical speed which is in rpm it is 24822 and mode shape is similarly you have to calculate the deflection in second critical speed condition at different uh, stations and mode shape as x axis shaft length y axis deflection and uh, it will give the shape of second critical speed please note that although it is written in uh, meter actual deflection not in meter it is just a mode shape now the third critical speed go for another selection of higher angular speed and see the you know same way you have to calculate and see the bending moment at a station number 10 should be zero and it is 41,355 rpm see this is a critical mode shape critical speed third critical speed mode shape x axis length of shaft y axis deflection at different station at critical speed that is at angular velocity or corresponding to the critical speed and the deflection is like this so this is the third critical speed mode shape so I hope you have understood the expression for you know various uh, type of uh, quantities that is a shear force bending moment slope and deflection and then we have also see the boundary conditions or starting condition or initial condition for part one and part two then we, we need to calculate shear force and bending moment at all stations and finally select the suitable value of angular speed where the bending moment at last station to become zero and that is called critical speed similarly select for the higher value and you will get the higher critical speeds so i hope you like this thank you thank you for watching